All right, well, it's a new day here in the shop. I stayed up pretty late doing the coating on this chassis. I got the entire front done, almost all of the back. I still need to do a little bit on the axle. Uh, I still need to do under the cab, but I'm gonna let this sit for a minute and come back to it. Uh, that blackout rust preventative stuff is working really good. One coat seems to be more than enough in most spots. So pretty happy with it. But now it's time to start working on this. So this is the service bed that's gonna be going on the truck and we need to basically clean it up and we're gonna be painting it white. So I'm gonna take all the doors off, the cabinets out. We're gonna clean it out as best we can and uh, then work on getting it painted. So I'm gonna clean out a bunch of this stuff. There's like this old foam in here. I'm gonna try to get as much of it out as I can and uh, get the old lights off of the back because I'm gonna be replacing them, get these guys off because they're getting replaced too. Uh, I'm probably gonna take the tailgate off and straighten it because it's got a big bend in it. And uh, straightening that on the truck would probably prove pretty difficult. Uh, unfortunately, I do believe I have to cut one side off to be able to get this thing out. So I'll just cut one side off and uh, get that out of the way, but get the old brackets off and stuff, straighten out the bumper, we'll be good to go. This whole thing needs wire wheeled down to where it's a smooth, rust-free surface. And then we'll treat it with uh, POR15 and it'll be good. So yeah, a little bit of work to do, that's for sure. And uh, not a whole lot of time to get it done. So we definitely need to get started on this and uh, get it painted white and ready to go on the back of the truck. So that's what we're working on. I'm about to hook up the old 67 to this trailer and drag it somewhere where it's a little nicer to work on rather than tucked away there in the corner. So that's what I'm working on right now. Probably just gonna set it over there and uh, then we'll get to work. We got some three on the tree action in here. We're gonna see how this works. Seems to be pulling it, so that's what counts. I'm gonna call that a win. So, definitely pulled it just fine. Yep, that's uh, kind of a piece of junk right now, but it'll be nice when we're done. I think, probably, hopefully. Yet to be determined. So I just got back from running errands and Nathan has got the box pretty well stripped down. Obviously we still gotta clean it out, but he's in the back wire wheeling all the rust out of it so i'm definitely glad he's doing that job and not me but as you can see the floor was pretty bad so he's taking care of it we got all the doors off so we can sand them and paint them it's looking pretty good i got one bolt that i gotta cut off on this side because it rounded off on the inside but other than that it all came apart pretty easy so can't complain one bit we did have a little bit of rust up here, so gonna have to bend that back straight. And then I might end up using this plate on top because it's got a couple little holes in it. So definitely need some love. Overall though, it's gonna be a good box. So I kind of forgot to film a lot of this while I was working on the bed. You can see I'm gloved up with safety glasses because I'm wire wheeling the back here. Luckily, I got a fan getting rid of most of the dust, so it's not blowing in my face. I was wearing a mask, but I got tired of it, so I put a fan in here blowing all the dust out. I've done a lot of the bed floor. Nathan did the front half. I've been working on this back half, so I got a little bit left to do, so I'll let you watch a time lapse of this because it might be satisfying. Well, there we go. We got the entire bed floor wire wheeled. When I found this thing, it had like four inches of leaves in it. So the bed floor was definitely very pitted. I might take this little rail out. I assume there used to be something that notched in here or slid in here. 
Uh, I think this also used to have like a raised floor in here. I'm also curious what this is. I assume they would have slid traffic cones into this or something. Uh, but from what I've been told, this was a bed on a phone company truck. Uh, so I think it would have had a ladder rack. I think it would have had some traffic cones up there, like I said, but it's a pretty killer box. It just needs a little love. So now I'm gonna cut this tailgate off so that uh, I can get it off the truck and fix how bent it is. I think I'm gonna reuse that tailgate though because it's pretty solid. I mean, it, with just one chain on it right now, I could stand on it. So it's definitely pretty beefy. Ugh. All right. go just like that it wasn't so bad now that the tailgate's out of the way it's time to strip the back half of this truck so i'm going to take the tail lights out the reverse lights and uh the license plate and i might even get these reflectors off of there but I think I'm gonna pull this into the shop first and work on it inside, cause why not? It's pretty clean now, so now it's time to put it in there. We've been working on the C20, getting a bunch of stuff done, and now it's time to take this and pressure wash it. So I'm gonna run over to the other house where the hose is actually hooked up and get the pressure washer out and clean this thing up before we bring it in here and test fit it on the truck, which is sitting back there on the ground again. And I'm the custodian here. I'm emptying the trash. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was much appreciated. So we got this on our janky little trailer. We're going to drag it over to the house and uh, pressure wash it. And one strap, that's plenty, right? It's not going anywhere. So I'm going to bring the C10 over here, hook it up, and drag it down the road. And as always, you got to have your supervisor watching everything. Boop. Cruising the old three on the tree 67 with the service bed in tow. Yeah, this truck has been super reliable for a long time. I think it's about due for a water pump, but we're still putting her to work. Basically a tractor. So we're gonna go pressure wash this bed real quick. All right, got the pressure washer out and hooked up. Moby's in the back of the truck, making sure we're doing a good job. Let's see if I can start this while filming, because this thing's been sitting a while. Come on. There we go. Got a few pulls, but now it's going. So now, time to pressure wash. Time to set you guys up on a time lapse and get some work done.
So it got kind of dark over there after I was finishing up, cleaning up the service bed. So I brought it back over to the shop and I got it off the trailer. Uh, got a little carried away, didn't film any of it. But as you can see, I got the service bed sitting there. The C20 is sitting right here. So this is kind of going to be the first time we see how closely that bed fits with this body. It's a little skinnier than the truck and it's definitely longer than the old bed. Um, you can see the frame ends right here on this one when the rear bumper is probably another, I don't know, maybe even a full foot back from where this frame ends. So it's definitely gonna be interesting to figure out how to tie all this together, but I'm gonna drop this thing down and see how this is gonna look. I'm pretty excited for this because we've been building up to this moment for a while. Let's find out how it works. All right, gotta raise it up off the locks. It's kind of important that this uh, actually goes on here. Let's see. Wanna make sure I don't hit the cab with the front of the bed because that would be pretty bad. Seems like it's going on there pretty well so far. I think I'm gonna have to roll the truck back just a little bit more once I get it down, um, but we'll see. So far, so good. Kind of the look we're going for so there's the truck well some of the truck the rest of it's not there and then there's the service bed so i think it needs to come forward just a little bit more but i have some tabs down there that are kind of interfering with that i think i could still slide it back a little bit right now so i think i still have a little room i can bring it back some you see that tab in there? It needs to sneak under the back of the cab. So I need to roll the truck back just a little bit more. And that might actually be good because it seems to be hitting on this leaf spring perch right here. Everything else looks like it's clearing pretty well so far. So I think there is hope for this after all. Let's see what we can do. I'm gonna try to roll the truck back just a touch more. Let's see. Let's see if it'll move, because it did start to touch. There you go, so it's touching those tabs now. And we are clear of that front leaf spring perch, which is pretty awesome. I'm glad it worked out that way. Yep, and I want to close this gap up even just a little bit more once I bring it down, just a touch further. So something like this is what this truck is gonna look like. Uh, like I said, the wheel is not quite centered in the wheel well. We've got some decent clearance. This is still gonna come forward a little bit. I want this gap to be probably half of what it is because there shouldn't be a lot of flex in this frame being a C20, it's got a beefier frame uh, and that'll help our wheel well situation just a little bit. So I think I'm gonna take this gap to about half of what it is right now. But I dig it. It's got a pretty cool look. Let me move this fan out of the way again. Yeah. I like it. I like it a lot. That's pretty freaking sweet. But I definitely need to paint that box because that minty green is not so good with the red. It uh, needs to be white. This is... Uh, what are we doing? <laughs> it's a struggle watching these two try to Instagram over here. It's like men and technology. Yeah, they're trying to do social media and they're too old for it while I'm filming a YouTube video. But I got Mark here from Indiana and we're putting him to work using some free labor. So uh, I, I had him remove the transmission cross member under here and now he's cleaning up the frame. He's going to be doing some... Sweet patina, so, blackout rust preventative where I haven't done it yet. He's having me do things that I can't really screw up easily. 
Yeah. So, and it's the stuff I don't want to do. Exactly. So it's like 40 days before Power Tour, and Mark should be in Indiana working on his truck. True. I'm thinking that he might be paying it forward down here because his truck's going to break down on Power Tour, oh. and this rescue truck is going to help him. Oh. That's yeah. fair. I don't know that I like that. What's funny is that the trucks are in similar conditions currently. Uh, very similar. Although I do have um, a complete cab. Okay, yeah, and you know, details. But other than that, no, we are uh, pretty much identical right now. Yeah. Well, we may need a driver for this truck, so, you okay. know, it might be okay if your truck's not done. <laughs> yeah. In okay. other words, nothing is going to go as planned, and it's all going to be a complete total fiasco the entire time. But anyway, Mark's here helping. Uh, he's from Built Should Have Bought Garage, which is probably not the kind of person you want working on your vehicle, but. I, I don't understand. It's what we got. His name implies that he should have paid somebody else to do it rather than doing it himself. There's, but, no, there's no implication. Yeah. He is an absolute. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm here working on the rear axle. I'm actually going to have to move this rear axle back about two and a quarter inches to center it closer in the wheel well of the service bed. Looking at the brakes, the brakes are actually in pretty good condition. So I'm just going to clean them off with some brake clean and uh, they'll be good to go. So I'm working on that. Going to loosen up the u-bolts and slide the axle back and drill a new hole for my uh leaf spring bolt to center up in and it'll be fine at least that's what i'm telling myself so we'll see how it goes it'll be good yeah mark is optimistic so that's always a good sign it'll be good let's see how much of a mess he can make with that now i have chassis a black the, hey look i have a drop cloth yeah <laughs> That I put there <laughs> after you made a mess. After I made a mess. Mark is good help. It's fine. We got Picasso under We're, the truck. Yeah, Picasso's under there. What's this? Our art project. <laughs> anyway, we're making it happen a little bit at a time. For once, I'm actually going to use brake clean for what it is actually intended for. And uh, I'm going to rebuild these rear brake drums. Just like that, rebuilt. See? Brand new. They actually do look like they're fairly new because um, I still see like blue paint and stuff. So these are definitely not original. And look, I actually care about my floor, so I'm catching it in a bucket. Yeah, boy, it'd be awful if you spilled something on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look at that. Freshly rebuilt rear brake shoes. Good to go. These old U-bolts are a little stubborn. But yeah, they're gonna come off of there. Yeah. So you saw us trying to get the U-bolts off of this rear axle so that we can actually slide the entire rear end about two inches back on the leaf springs because the service bed we're putting on this truck the wheel would have been very close to the front instead of closer to center. It's still not going to be perfectly centered in the wheel opening, but this two inches is going to get us a lot closer to center than it was going to be. So I'm working on drilling out the upper uh, bracket that holds the U-bolts for this leaf spring bolt to actually slide up into. And then I'm going to have to slide the axle out and drill a hole two inches forward on the actual perch. And, uh, that should work getting this axle two inches back without having to modify either of the hangers that are on the actual frame. So I'll show you what we're doing. I think Moby seems pretty okay with it. So we're gonna call it good enough. We'll make it work. Uh, and while I'm in here, it'll give me the chance to clean up and paint this stuff that's under here so we won't get any rust streaking down this nice black chassis. So it's kind of a win-win. Anyway, let me walk you up to the drill press and show you what I'm dealing with. So here is that upper U-bolt uh, bracket that goes on top of the leaf springs. And normally that bolt and nut came up and sat inside of this space, but because we're sliding the entire axle back two inches, I need to drill a hole here where that uh, nut and bolt has a place to come up through this. And uh, this should do the trick. So I'm gonna raise the table up just a little bit and uh, start drilling. It's always nice to have a drill press handy. That's a big chip right there. Man. Like seven inches long. Pretty impressive. 
That sounded wrong. But anyway, there we go. So now that nut and bolt has a spot to fit up in there and uh, we can put this back on the truck. So now that I got these U-bolt brackets modified and uh, ready to work with my two inch setback, I need to drill a new hole in my perch to be able to move the axle back and have it center up on this pin that sticks out the bottom of the leaf spring. So I made this little template and this way both sides will be exactly the same and it won't screw with the alignment of our rear end and have us crab walking down the road. So I'm gonna go ahead and take care of this real quick and then uh, drill a couple holes. I went ahead and picked up the paint today for the bed. So we'll be able to paint that thing hopefully tomorrow. I think the weather's gonna be nice enough because I'm just gonna drag it outside and paint it because it really doesn't need to be perfect. And then I'm gonna work on making all my mounts under here to make it fit on the back of that truck right there. We'll see how that goes. A little bit out of time, making progress. Yeah, buddy. All right, so it's a weird day here in the shop. Uh, we're actually painting something. In case you guys haven't noticed, we really don't do a lot of paint work here except for with the rattle cans. But we have proper paint. This is a Omni MTK 2K Urethane by PPGE. Apparently, Nathan just pointed out, it's a Daihatsu color. I don't know. They uh, color matched a panel out of the El Camino. And I guess when they color matched it, the closest color they could get that was already somewhere was off of Daihatsu. So we have that, we have a reducer, we have a hardener, and of course the almighty Harbor Freight gun. So I'm about to get this mixed up. I'm gonna do four to one to one, but I'm actually gonna do four to one to one half. So I gotta do some math, figure this out because uh, I'm no expert on this stuff, but we'll get it handled. All right, outside the shop, we've got a little bit of a rig going on to support everything. We've got a ladder with a few pieces of steel, square tubing, holding up all the doors off of the bed. The bed is here on our janky little trailer. We've got it all masked off with bits of cardboard from race car parts. And we're gonna give it a try. See how it uh, goes with this Harbor Freight gun that I have. So I'm gonna get set up and start painting. And then I'm sure I will cut to a time lapse because it's gonna take me a minute to figure this out. I am not a painter, I will never claim to be one, but we're gonna try to make this stuff look halfway decent. Although I kinda do want the rust to come back through, so that's why we didn't treat this to perfection, because the truck is patinaed and the bed will be super bright white, and I think that might look a little weird, so we'll hope the rust comes back in a year or two. Well, here you go. We got the $20 Harbor Freight Special. I have a regulator on it and a filter because I care. And for the internet's sake, I'm actually wearing a mask. And yes, I know it's not a respirator, but it's better than nothing, right? Safety third. Um, so I'm gonna start on the back of these doors cause I have no idea how this is gonna go. And uh, we're just gonna see what happens. There's paint, so I don't know. I'm just gonna go for it. Could be worse. Could be better. So I didn't really know what I was doing there starting out. Uh, I went and watched a YouTube video on how to set up the gun and I had my fluid level wrong as well as my pressure just a little lower than a lot of people recommend. So I bumped the pressure up. I uh, dropped my fluid level down a good bit. So now I'm using less paint and I'm getting a much better spray pattern. So. I got the backs of the doors all painted. I still need to go finish one because I ran out of paint right there at the end. And I figured doing the backs of the doors first was a good idea because that way I would learn what to do and what not to do. And that was very true. It, uh, it kind of worked out good that way. So now I'm going to start painting the front of the doors and then uh, move on to the bed. So yeah, we're making it happen. I just mixed up some more paint. So I'm good to go to spray at least the rest of the back of the door and at least one coat on the other side. And uh, yeah, I'm learning something here. So back to the time lapse. Whoop.
All right, so I got two coats on the doors. I think it is gonna need a third, so I'm gonna let that flash off back there. And in about five, 10 minutes, I'll put another coat on the doors. But now I'm gonna start on the bed and do a light coat on the side and the front, as well as the other side, which you won't see on this time lapse because I'm not moving the camera in the middle of all this. I'm getting covered in paint. It's uh, definitely an experience. I definitely remember why I hated working in a shop that did paint and body as well, because this sucks, but it's gonna look good when it's done and uh, I'm excited to see it all one color instead of this minty green grossness that it's been for a while. So I'm gonna get to work painting this front side of the bed and uh, then we'll move on and mix up some more paint and do a heavy final coat on those doors. Unfortunately, uh, I couldn't paint and move the camera around, so I missed painting this side. Got a few little runs here and there. I got a decent bit of runs here at the top, so I might actually wet sand those out because those look terrible. But overall, it's turning out pretty good. Uh, pretty happy with the way it's going on. Still need to do a little more on the inside and on the top, but I haven't even started on this side yet, so I'm gonna get a coat on this side and a coat on the front. So I'll let you guys watch that happen at least. All right, so I gotta top off my paint real quick and then I'll be doing one final coat on the entire bed. Um, and hopefully it all goes well. I don't want any more runs. I only got a couple, but you know, I wanted zero. So anyway, back to the time lapse. It is all one color now, so painted it white. It's looking pretty good. Like I said, I have just a couple runs here and there, but I bet I had runs in it from the factory, let's be honest. So got the whole back painted white. I didn't paint the floor, and honestly, I walked all over it, so it looks terrible anyway, but it's gonna have a rubber mat, so it doesn't matter. It's got POR 15 on it, so it'll be just fine. Uh, I think it's looking pretty good overall, so. Uh, I'm gonna do one more coat on this side once this flashes off, uh, but I'm pretty pleased. So the inside of the doors aren't perfect, but I also started with the inside of the doors, so I really don't care. Uh, the outside of the doors look pretty good. So you come on this side, a little beat up, it's got a dent in it, but the outside of the doors turned out pretty nice. They are pretty smooth, pretty flat. That one's actually really glossy. And uh, yeah, I can't complain too much about this process. We'll just leave it outside. It's not supposed to rain until tomorrow sometime. So we'll just leave it out here and then uh, bring it inside when it's dry. Yeah, not too shabby. I'm a mess though. I got paint in my nose. I got paint all over my arms. My shoes are white. My leg hair is white. Should have worn pants, but it's too hot for pants. Screw that. So I totally forgot to film a little update for you guys on how the bed turned out 
uh, once we actually got it back in the shop. So it's up here on the lift, sitting above the truck. And yes, the truck does fit very nicely under the bed, just barely. It's very nice to be able to stack the truck underneath the bed to be able to store them and get all of our other projects in here. Cause it's raining, so you really don't want all your projects getting wet. But bed turned out pretty good. It is uh, far from perfect. Uh, it did turn out uh, whiter than I wanted it. I didn't want it to be quite so bright white. I wanted more of an antique white, but they didn't really match my color very well. So I'm a little annoyed by that, but at the same time, doesn't really matter. Got all the doors sitting over here curing as well. Uh, it's not perfect at all, but it is definitely more than good enough. So can't complain about that, uh, but I haven't really been working on that since I brought it in. All I did was just pull the masking tape off it's just sitting there waiting to be assembled. So that'll be going on the truck here in the near future. We'll see. Uh, there is lots of work left to be done and not a whole lot of time. It's always a good idea, but we're making it happen and that's what counts.